thought this would be a great time to finally do a part two of the Open WebRx. I did one back earlier on in the video uh, series and never got around to closing this out. But I'm going to cover using SDR Play equipment with Open WebRx because this is another program that's installed in Dragon OS and pretty much right out of the box uh, will get your SDR Play equipment up and running. And if you have a look on YouTube for the SDR Play page, you'll find that they did a webinar recently where they uh, had the uh, developer that is continuing uh, development on OpenWebRx despite the, I think the original site or maybe the original developer uh, kind of moving on and that shutting down. Uh, so I'll put this link in the description, but the development continues. It's a great uh, receiver software. You know, it's got a nice web interface to it. It works really well. In the case of Dragon OS LTS, it is installed uh, by manual package installation, and you can find those directions here, and you'll uh, find essentially all the source that I've pulled down up to about, I think, the WS JTX modes. I didn't do that part. Uh, everything is sitting in the user source directory. So if you have a look, you'll find, you'll find that I've left everything there. What we're going to look at is the OpenWebRx folder. And you'll see it's uh, uh, filled with several JSON files that are uh, pre-configured. I would say uh, you need to, at the very minimal, you need to adjust some of these settings to apply to your local area, obviously, for frequencies that are active. Uh, let's take a look at, I, I changed very minimal uh, or changed uh, only a few things with the de uh, default configurations here. You see I left it on port 8073. The web GUI configurations you can change. I would recommend changing settings here. There is a way to activate uh, all the way at the bottom of this configuration file. You can uncomment and turn on a uh, option for the web GUI, but I found that I don't think that's complete. As a matter of fact, it says uh, experimental. Uh, DSP RX settings, if you find that video I'm talking about that SDR Play did, a webinar, they talk about some uh, FFT settings that you might want to look at adjusting for SDR Play equipment. I'm going to leave it default for right now. I'm just going to look under the IQ sources. You can see all the various different types of uh, devices that are supported and what you would need to fill out as far as a, a type. Uh, I'm going to go down here. There's a few default uh, profiles in here. You've got RTL SDR. You got Air Spy, and then the third one here you have SDR Play. Now the only thing I've changed is the name here, uh, which doesn't impact much of anything except for in the web GUI that I'll show you here in a second. But I just changed that to uh, say RSP1 Alpha because that's what I'm going to use. Uh, type SDR Play. I've left the profiles uh, default. Well, uh, actually, I copied the RTL SDR 70CM and 2M down to here because there's some uh, amateur repeaters and frequencies that I know are active and I changed their center freaks and start freaks uh, just so that uh, for the purposes of this video it just defaults boom right to that active frequency so I can show. Start modulation I left the same. Uh, you'll see in some newer releases it, uh, as an example here you can specify antenna settings for the different profiles or it looks as though you could put that antenna setting right up above profiles, which uh, I take it as it should apply to all profiles. And you can find more information out about your uh, SDR play equipment or really anything using uh, SOAPI uh, by using, let's see, I'll show you here, this utility here. We can see, I see I have uh, the driver, SDR play, the RSP1 alpha plugged in. So if you do a probe, then you can get more information about your antenna settings, uh, your gain values, sample rates, so on and so forth. And then if you have a look over on the um, OpenWebRx page, you can find where you can apply those uh, more uh, specific settings and how to apply that in the configuration files. Uh, again, I'm just going to show uh, getting this up and going with the RSP1 Alpha. I've got it running. I want to open a localhost 8073 and I'll have to adjust the volume here. But uh, right out of the box here, you know, I, and these, you know, these settings I can uh, 
specify you know the names and the bookmarks. But if I jump over here, I've got let's see. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's a local uh, repeater, local uh, amateur club around here that are uh, that are talking right now, and and I have I have no issues uh, receiving. Let me see if I flip over here. So you should be able to you should be able to hear that now. And uh, if I had let's see if I had uh, t taken the time to do the bookmarks, you would see that up here. I just have it uh, essentially when I switch to these. Like I said, I have it hard coded to the um, to the particular uh, frequency that I know is active. All of these tabs, that's what came default. I've not uh, changed much of uh, anything, so. So, uh, again, you can see this is probably left over from where I was trying it, uh, the default username and password or admin and password. This is if you were to activate the uh, experimental setting uh, that I mentioned in that configuration page, but I found that uh, it doesn't appear that you can actually change these and save it, at least uh, in, in my minimal amount of testing, it just errors out. So I would say change it via the configuration file and have, uh, have a great time with your SDR play equipment and uh, open my barracks.